All right. So today we're going to continue discussing centering, and we're going to start off looking at some of the stages of centering. All right. So it's convenient to break up the stages of centering into three stages. There's no creative names or anything. They're basically named initial, uh, middle, and final. So don't worry about the names. Uh, more importantly, though, is what happens in those stages. So the initial stage um, is where we start off uh, again, as we always do, with this powder compact of all these uh, individual particles. And uh, what happens in this initial stage is that the particles uh, can actually rearrange. So we don't, this might not seem obvious, but this is something that can happen. Um, the particles can basically rearrange, uh, maybe packing in a more uh, compact way than they were during our shaping method. So that's something that can happen in this uh, initial. Uh, uh, additionally, this is where we have the first formation of a bond between particles. And so this is what we refer to as a neck. And so that initial neck forms. Uh, so here uh, again, let me backtrack. So this just kind of shows the rearrangement of particles. Uh, you can maybe see a, a slight lessening of the dark space in between. And then um, uh, when we form the neck, that initial bond, uh, that's at the contact point between particles. So these are um, what's happening in this initial stage. Okay, so now let's move on to the intermediate. Um, and so the uh, difference here uh, between uh, and how we sort of classify the ends uh, of these stages and the beginnings of others is in this case, um, this is where we've, um, we basically take over where we've formed a neck. So basically formation, if we go back to the previous, in the initial stage, uh, formation of a neck between all these particles, that kind of gives us the end point for this initial stage. And so that's where we start uh, for the intermediate or second stage uh, in this process. So the, um, the neck uh, between those particles grows. Um, this is where we have the formation of a grain boundary, right? So that we have grain boundary. Um, the grains can also grow to, to some extent. This isn't a large uh, percentage, but we can have grain growth uh, occur. Uh, but the main thing uh, in this step is that the uh, size of the neck increases, forming more and more uh, grain boundaries. And this is where we have the highest degree of shrinkage because the centers of those original particles are moving closer and closer together as the um, the particles intensify and so the uh, sort of end point here for this intermediate step um, is where uh, we again look at the pore structure and we've formed all these grain boundaries and uh, uh, in these previous views up here and in the, the previous slide, um, you see that the empty space represented by the dark regions is very uh, continuous, right? So you can basically go from uh, one point to the next within the pore structure. So intermediate stage concludes when that pore structure goes from continuous, meaning we can go from one place to another, to isolated. So now uh, these pore spaces are isolated in one particular area. And so that's how we differentiate um, uh, is basically the pore structure becoming more and more isolated. And that means the end of this intermediate stage. All right. Lastly, this is where we have the highest degree of grain growth. So basically densification has for the most part um, uh, uh, happened. And so we are moving on to sort of grain growth where that picks up and the uh, so this is kind of showing those isolated pores uh, the grains can grow um, and those discontinuous pores can be removed uh, either by vacancy diffusion uh, with grain boundaries uh, and it can also be aided by 
the, uh, the growth of grains. Uh, but the important part here is that controlled grain growth is important uh, when we're talking about uh, porosity. And so this is kind of the ideal case where throughout this process, through grain growth and uh, these various mass transport mechanisms, mechanisms, we're able to eliminate that empty space. But again, key is on controlled grain growth. That's what we saw in the last lecture with the addition of MGO to AL203 to control uh, grain, uh, grain growth. And so the, uh, the negative here, the, the what, what wrong can happen is let's say we do have uh, very rapid grain growth. And so in the previous examples, those, um, uh, if I go back to it, those pores are um, at the junctions between various grain boundaries and basically stuck at those points um, uh, on grain boundaries between grains. Well, if the grain grows too rapidly, then the grain boundary can actually move faster than the pore and become uh, detached, uh, detached. And so in these cases, um, you see kind of the, the grain boundaries here um, they're becoming uh, detached and the pores um, are kind of stuck now and they're stuck in the interior of a grain. And so at this point, it's very difficult, almost impossible to eliminate pores when they're in the interior of a grain. So once we've reached the point where grain boundaries have detached from pores uh, or the other way around, uh, then um, we're not able to remove this porosity, and so our density is too low uh, because we aren't able to fully do that. And again, this is a consequence of too rapid grain growth. So this is why a big push is to try to limit grain growth when we center. And so basically that's what's happening uh, in this example. So again, we show the uh, grain size versus percent theoretical density, and uh, in case two, this is where um, the uh, grain size is increasing too much, and it reaches this sort of region here, which leads to separation. So basically, this is kind of showing that if the grain size increases too fast, it can reach this sort of case where the grains um, or the pores separate from the grain boundaries. Uh, so what we need is suppressed grain growth by keeping uh, down on the, uh, the y-axis, and that surpasses this sort of separation, and it allows us to remove that porosity uh, while it's still on the junction points. So as the, the grains get larger, that, uh, you know, mobility, so basically it's happening as the, as the grains get larger, their mobility can increase, and that's how these pores can separate. And then again, once they separate, they get trapped and they're next to impossible to remove.